Hello there, everyone. Welcome back, and I'm here to be talking about Frozen 2. Frozen 2 is the sequel to the big mega hit, box office-wise, Frozen, that came out back in 2013, and it has the main cat, most of the main cast returning. Where and the premise is that Elsa is hearing like this siren, like in this like fog somewhere, like in the distance. So she, along with her sister Anna. Kristoff, Sven, the, the deer, right. <laughs> and the snowman Olaf go to travel there to discover what's going on. That's basically vague as I'm going to go because I don't really want to dive that much into it because there's surprisingly a good amount of stuff that happens in it. And let me just start off that I when Frozen came out, like everyone we saw when we're like, oh, it was nice. Really overrated movie for sure. The songs though were really catchy, but they started to be overplayed to a point where they got irritated. And eventually once it sort of, I mean, Frozen's still huge, but once it kind of died down, they make another one. I mean, it has been six years, so I give them props for actually giving it a few years, attempting to make a, like a good story to continue instead of just rehashing and shoving it out like Illumination does with the trash Despicable Me series. Every like two years or whatever, they make a new one. It's disgusting. Or even make a sequel to Minions, but regardless, they actually put an effort, and you can tell because the animation. Like, I mean, this is a given at this point, especially for Disney and all. But it's it's amazing. It's really flawless. It looks fantastic. Um, what's the thing that I like is um, the main like message and what they do with the story is a bit out of the box with some of these recent Disney animated movies, and I like that. Like, I can't really dive into what exactly, but when you watch the movie, you'll you'll realize. That it does stuff a bit different like there isn't like a main threat per se that they have to go up against it's basically i'll just say the main message is writing the wrongs of the past with no spoilers and stuff but i thought that was really cool and i really dug the message and story and stuff what i was disappointed with is some of the characters didn't feel like they needed to be there now this is a trend i've noticed twice now with Disney sequels, like especially the first one with Wreck It Ralph 2 or Ralph Breaks the Air, and that you had that film where it made pretty much some of the supporting cast and all was not even in the film at all. They had them there for like their one cameo thing and they set up something that they could have done with them, but then no, they're, they're just not in the movie at all. That was disappointing, and then the plot that they did present was not that good, in my opinion. Here, the characters that were in the first one, like the main core five, you know, the, the sisters, Kristoff. The um, Sven and Olaf, they're in the movie for a good amount. I like that. They even have some cameo stuff, like from the Rock Trolls, um, her, um, the Elsa and Anna's parents, and like flashbacks and stuff. They do have some of the returning cast, but some of the characters, while this, they do go on the journey with them, they're just kind of sidelined for different characters, if that makes sense. And I found that really disappointing i mean they're improving with their sequel because i thought this was a much better sequel attempt than wreck it ralph 2 was but they need to keep at it a bit more because it's you can tell that they don't really do this type of stuff most of their sequels were just straight to dvd trash from like the 90s and 2000s so i like that they're attempting it and they took their time with this i respect that and i, I like most of the movie it's just some of the stuff like that irritated me a little also some of the new stuff in it like they had some like supposed to be <gasps> spoilers but you, you you could pick up on it <laughs> you know what i'm saying like you knew it was coming and then they flat out told you right as you were thinking of it so i was like oh why are we gonna set up like it could be a spoiler i mean there's just some stuff like that that was odd another thing is that the music in the movie <laughs> it's not that catchy which could be a relief i mean you have the main one into the unknown it's all right but it's no let it go like the the best and there's two versions of it there's the one that elsa sings that you've been seeing and stuff probably on youtube and then you have the one during the credits i like the one during the credits more and then Kristoff has a song that song i'm not gonna lie i kind of like it like it's hilarious it's how it's like animated and filmed and stuff is fantastic <laughs> it's so goofy i really liked it it was funny um like i would have to say like a lot of people were giving critiques like they didn't like Olaf and stuff. He was overused and stuff. I'm not gonna lie. I thought I found him hilarious. Like he was funny, just like he was in the first one. And I, I was, I liked that he was in it a bit more. So I was fine with Olaf, guys. I'm Team Olaf for this movie. He was pretty good. Like <laughs> um, the sisterly, you know, bond that Anna and Elsa have, I think, is pretty good. 
and they develop it more from the first movie i like that the like some of the new characters they introduced like sterling k brown's character he's you know passable he there isn't really that much for him there but he's in it and you could feel his presence so i mean he was all right um like they they developed more into the story of the universe and i i liked it i mean honestly there's parts of this movie that i really like more than the last one like the story i think was i i found more intriguing here and it wasn't as predictable and ooh villain twists and stuff but like some of the characters at least had stuff to do in the last one and the songs were better in the last one because i remember them all not because it was overplayed and stuff but just when seeing the movie for like the first time i they were catchy and i liked them there's only like two here that i really like the rest are just so like it's kind of a mixed bag on like it's it's a bit different from the first one so like if there was stuff you wanted to see like the first one you might be disappointed but like they're both good movies I think this one might be either on par or better for me. I just, I found this one much more, you know, better than the first one to me. But it does have its problems, no doubt. But I thought it was a nice time at the movies and we're getting ready for the Christmas holiday season. So it was a nice start to that really. Like this late November, December type of area. I thought it was a nice film to go see. So with all that said, those are my thoughts on Frozen 2. Have any of you gotten a chance to see Frozen 2? If so, please let me know down below in the comment section. And if you want to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to get notified when I upload, that would be pretty great. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's Sora Sable or at Sable Sora. Again, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.